they were starting a new series. It'll go all through the summer. So as often as you want to wear white shoes, we will be preaching from the Psalms. And when the day comes when you no longer can wear white shoes, we're going to go on to something else. But in the meantime, feel free to look like Pat Boone. Sorry, that's an old cultural reference for elderly people. I'm sorry, I just forget that. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, I love the Psalms, and, and uh, as a staff team, we were exploring what to preach on, and, uh, and it just seems this is good because the Psalms are the song book of, of God's people, and uh, they speak to our heart, they speak to our mind, they speak to our life, uh, they teach us, they inspire us, they depress us sometimes. Um, it's all of life together, and uh, what better what better thing to do through the summer than to explore this? And... Um, uh, today, uh, we're going to look at, at Psalm 1, obviously the, the first one, and, uh, and I, I like it because it's, um, it really is the prelude to the whole collection of, uh, of songs of the faith. And so, uh, let me read it from Psalm 1. Uh, Blessed, happy is the one who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. And they're like a tree planted by streams of water, a tree which yields its fruit in season, and its leaf does not wither. And whatever they do, they prosper. Not so with the wicked. They're like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. The Lord teaches, teaches from your word, how we might live in your plan, in your will, in your strength, in your spirit. That's our need today, in Jesus' name, amen. You know, I love this psalm because it, it, like so much in the Bible, there's this dichotomy going on. There's, there's two parts of this. And uh, one is, what happens uh, if, if we meditate on God's word and if we focus on the Lord and we, let, and we let God be God in our life, and what happens if we don't? And it's kind of cut and dried. It's not really ambivalent, is it? It's not like saying, well, you know, a little this, a little that, you know. Uh, that, that doesn't come out in the psalms. And, uh, and the result of a life lived uh, in, with a focus on God's Word is one of substance, of one of growth, of one of being solid, and being fruitful. And for turning away from God, ignoring Him, or listening to the things, what's the result? Vaporous, the chaff that blows away in the wind, and gone. So, so the psalmist gives us at the very start of the songbook, we're going to have choices, and we're going to see these choices played out uh, over the weeks ahead as we look at all these different psalms, and we're going to see that uh, God's continually giving us options, and. Uh, and our life may be over here, and he gives us an option. You don't have to stay here. You can come over here. You know? And then we're here, and we're thinking, well, maybe I want to go over there. He goes, well, you got an option. You could stay here and be a solid person. You don't have to go there. But what it says is, who are you going to listen to? Happy is the one who doesn't do this, who doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Uh, sit in the uh, stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. It, don't do that. Pay attention to who you're allowing to speak into your life. Pay attention to, to who you're allowing to shape you and influence you and, and set the standards for your life. It matters. That, that's basically what this is saying. Now, we all are going to face issues, life and death issues, uh, good and bad issues. And what this psalm is saying is, as you do that, and as you face these issues, these choices coming away, are you going to be 
focused on the Lord and solid and fruitful, or you're just going to die and blow away. It's up to you. Nobody determined that for you. It's up to you. Now, there's a tension in the Psalms, and uh, uh, I've already apologized in advance to Sheila in case I get this all wrong, but it seems to me there's two kinds of people who are, I used to think there were people who like country and those who like Western, but I've, I've broadened my spectrum now. And, and I think that uh, from the Psalms, I can see there's two kinds of people. There's people who like blues, and there's people who like gospel. That's basically the dichotomy. And I apologize to Sheila because I, mean, I, may, I may not understand gospel at all. So, sorry. I didn't have to apologize to anyone about the blues, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Larry. <laughs> In advance. Uh, see, it's really strange how... Uh, you know, the blues are, are, I think, you know, psychologically, they're designed like a, like the old school uh, antidepressants, where they, they push you down, they make you even more depressed than you are until finally your whole system kicks in and you fight to the surface. That's, that's what antidepressants will do to you, you know. Uh, old school way of looking at it. And, and, uh, and then there's gospel, which we had a couple of weeks ago. Remember the gospel choir sang, Sheila led us, and uh, joyful, and we're praising God, and we're looking forward to eternity with the Lord, and telling the story of how God's brought us here. And it is so uplifting and encouraging and, and, and joyful, right? How do you have the songbook of God's people where half of it is the blues? My baby left me. She took everything. My life is bad. I lost my job. Even God doesn't remember me. That's blues, right? Welcome to my kind of preaching. <laughs> that's, that's, it. that's the way I do it. That's the way we roll here. And, uh, but then there's the, the joyful hope celebration. And I think we need to, to look at these two where, where blues and gospel kind of collide in our lives. And, and see what is it that God's teaching us about this. Like for, for example, let's pick a few. Of these. We're going to be looking at a bunch of them through the summer, but um, looking ahead, how about uh, Psalm 10? Why, O oh Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? Oh, my baby left me. <laughs> I lost everything. Why do you hide yourself? You know, uh, you don't have to look far. How for Psalm 13? How long, O oh Lord, will you for, will you forget me forever? Will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts? How long? And every day I'm going to have sorrow in my heart. How long will my enemy triumph over me? Well, I can just hear Baby King just. <laughs> You know, I, you hit that blues note thing, you know, it's kind of, mm, it's hard to play on a piano, though, because they, when you hit a note, it is it. It's hard to bend that, you know. But B.B. can do this. Mm, you, you hear that blues note, though, in this song? You're going to forget me forever? My enemy's going to triumph over me? Is this the way it's going to be? So, see, and I love the blues. I mean, I don't love them, I like them. Really? Larry loves them. <laughs> but, you know, then you've got the gospel. And you know, the psalms are filled with gospel music. I love this. You know, I mean, just flip through, uh, find a few here. 97. The Lord reigns, let the earth be glad, let distant shores rejoice. 98. Sing to the Lord a new song. He's done marvelous things. His right hand, his holy arm, it works salvation. The Lord's made a salvation. That's celebration, isn't it? 99. The Lord reigns. Let the nations tremble. 101. Let's keep going. I'll sing of your love and justice to you, Lord. I'll sing praise. I'll be careful to lead a blameless life. I'll walk in my house with blameless heart. I'll set my eyes on Hallelujah. You know, I mean, you could really get into this. And then turn the page. The blues. 
Hear my prayer. Let my cry for help come to you. Do not hide your face from when I'm in distress. Turn your ear to me. For my days vanish like smoke. My bones burn like glowing embers. You know, you, right there. You're on this gospel concert, and then I'm a man. Now, how do we live in this tension? How do we live where blues and gospel meet? And where do they meet? They meet in our lives. That's where they meet. Now, the, uh, there's always been this conf uh, conflict in, in uh, media stuff. Years ago, I went down to a Directors Guild of America that had a theological discussion with film producers and directors and a few pastors and theologians and we're talking about what's going on in movies, you know. And one of the things that they said was in Hollywood and the movies, they really have a clear sense of what's wrong. They have a clear vision for the pain and the problems and the heartache and you can watch a movie and it just grips you because it's so real. And there's no answers. And then you have, you have Christian stuff, which is all answers and everything's great and the Lord loves it and everything's super great, but they are really shallow on the problems. He said, if only we could get Christians to recognize the issues and get, get Hollywood to recognize the answers. Wouldn't that be strong? You know, I'm taking that and applying it to the music. How do we get the blues people to realize that there's hope? And joy, not not a, not just you know happy happy times, but but there there's hope in the midst of. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And we get the gospel people to realize, yeah, we're celebrating because here's where we were, here's where we are, here's where we might be, and yet, and yet, Jesus takes our hand and, and lifts us up. That's where it comes together so strongly. Now. Last weekend, I, I drove down to Walnut Creek, dropped Eileen off in Reading, left her there, and uh, it's, it was 800 miles each way. So I rented a car. I rented the Thursday morning, I rented a Chevy Malibu, and then Thursday afternoon, I read the Wall Street Journal, a full page article about how the Chevy Malibu is the most dysfunctional recalled car in America. <laughs> I, went, I picked it, you know. But, so we headed out, and I real after 100 miles or so, I realized we had this thing called Sirius Satellite Radio thing, you know? I've never seen that before. I almost had three collisions trying to read the screen and, you know, figure that thing out. And around Portland, I finally figured out how to turn it on and stuff. And uh, you get any music you want. And I, I went to the blues section. And I didn't realize so much blues. There's all kinds of blues. You can get this kind of blues, that kind of blues, the other kind of blues. Uh, Delta Blues, Chicago, Southside Chicago Blues, which is Delta Blues, but with electric guitars, you know, and uh, that kind of thing. And, uh, and then I discovered they have a gospel section. They have old school gospel, they got new school gospel, they got uh, white southern gospel, they got real gospel, they, you know, all of that stuff. And, uh, and so I decided I was going to listen to gospel music for like two hours on the road. And it, was, and it was great. It was really fun. And it was all different. And, you know, some of the preacher weaved the story through the songs and all those things. And, uh, and, and it really was joyful and encouraging for us two hours, you know, down towards Medford. And, uh, you know, and, and I'm praise Lord. And then it suddenly hit me, okay, I'm kind of bored with this. And then I had guilt. I thought, well, what if I get to heaven and it's all gospel music? And then I said, I'm bored after two hours. God's going to send me to bed for him, which is hell, you know. And, 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 uh, but, so I went up and I found the blues state. I got, I got uh, Beebe's Blues Channel. And, uh, uh, and I listened to that for a couple of hours. And I was so depressed. <laughs> you cannot believe it. I was like, oh man, I gotta find a Wendy so I can go and talk to people. I can't stay on this show. And, uh, uh, and then coming back, I decided, okay, I'm gonna flip it. So I'll do like 20 minutes on blues, 20 minutes on gospel. And I started doing that. And then I started, okay, then, this, then the sermon started taking shape. Gospel, blues, gospel, <laughs> you know, 800 miles home. 
just doing that. And um, now, uh, last Sunday, I was staying with some friends, uh, and uh, we didn't go to church, but but we did church. We, uh, they had a uh, connection with Ebenezer Baptist Church in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, Martin Luther King Jr.'s uh, church, historic church, and uh, and it was a wonderful service. They had to start with a big gospel choir, except they just call it a choir. You know, they were singing great gospel music, which they just call it music. But um, uh, the pastor got up and he was really fabulous, Raphael uh, Warnock, and uh, and, I, and uh, no kidding, I'll just tell you this: uh, the camera's on him, and he's hitting the public. And just he's about to start, in the second row of the choir, a big singer man just collapses, passed out dead. <laughs> Can we get a doctor? Can we get? And I thought, yeah, okay. So it doesn't just happen to me. You know, it happens to all of us. You know. And, and uh, they finally got that taken care of. And, but but in his sermon, he was talking about uh, uh, in all of the stuff of our life. How do we know that God's still with us? How do we know? And he said, you know, that's really one of the most important things for us to discover is how do we know that God has not forgotten us in our life? And I, it, that hooked me, and I really, I, I pondered it. And, and here in, uh, in Psalm 1, how, how does, uh, let me flip over here. Verse 6, after talking about righteous people, wicked people, it says, for the Lord watches over the way of the righteous. That's the promise that's the prelude to the whole Psalms. We're going to see as, as we go through the Psalms and we hear the, the praise and the cares and the prayers of the people, we're going to see that the Lord watches over the ways of the righteous. Uh, he doesn't watch over the ways of the wicked, evidently. He just blows them away. But, um, but the ways of the righteous, the Lord is focused on. And I thought, that's really, really important. And uh, it reminded me over in um, Isaiah uh, 49, I think it is. Isaiah 49, can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child that she's born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. You hear that? It's unthinkable that the mother would forget the child that she's born. But if she does forget, I will not forget you, the Lord says. See, I've engraved you on the palms of my hands. I've engraved you on the palms of my hands. What a visual image that is, isn't it? And uh, I was I was reading some of the uh, commentaries about this, and some people interpret that to be uh, God saying, "I've written your name on, on my hands." But the, the scholars say that actually is a wrong translation. I've engraved you, your life, your story, your issues, your struggles, your victory. I, I've got you on my the palms of my hands. I'm not going to forget you. Now, Pastor Warnock, there in Ebenezer, was talking about tattoos. Well, we don't do that here, you know. Uh, well, we do it, but we don't talk about it. You know, it's that different, you know. But anyway, he was, he was, you know, that, uh, he was doing a wedding, and uh, is the people, you know, they have beautiful tattoos, all different kinds and all different places and things like some of you. And, uh, and so um, he said, he's doing a wedding, and the bride was coming down the aisle. And a beautiful script tattoo coming up from her shoulder up onto her neck, Larry. And then across the back of her neck, her hair was up, the back of her neck, inscribed Larry tattooed. And he said, as she's coming down the aisle, everybody in the, in the church noticed it and went, she must love Larry so much. She must just, why am I always with her? And they went, the groom's name was Otis. <laughs> what's, 
what's happening here? <laughs> but you know what? Otis is going to look at her every day and think of Larry. <laughs> he was probably two boyfriends back. But, uh, you know, he'll be forever. And, and it's the same kind of thing. When God, God has inscribed you in the palms of his hands. And I want us, as we go through the summer, we look at the Psalms, and we look at the blues, and we look at the gospel, and we see how life comes through this. I want us to see that the Lord watches the way of the righteous. He, is, he doesn't forget us. He doesn't let us disappear from his mind and care while he goes on to important people. You and I are inscribed on the palms of his hands. I love that visual image, don't you? It's really, really strong. <clears throat> and so now we come to communion, and it suddenly hit me. The very night that Jesus was betrayed, like a few hours before his death, what does he do? What's he do? He gives thanks, and then what? He takes the bread in the palm of his hand. Holds it in the palm of his hand. Where your life and my life is inscribed. And he said, this is my body broken for you. With those hands. With your life on it. And then he takes the cup and he, and he holds it in the palms of his hands. Where your life is inscribed. Where you, your story... Your heartbreaks and your joy, they're all there. And he takes out the hands and he says, this is the cup, my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. And he's holding it next to your story. Right? And then it's not long until he's dragged up the hill and they drive the nails through where? The palms of his hands. Right through your story, right through your life, right through your forever remembered. And then after the resurrection, when, when Thomas is doubting, and he goes to, uh, he shows, comes up to Thomas, and he goes, you got questions, boy, I, I could write that. Why don't you stick your fingers through the palms of my hands where your story is inscribed? Touch me there. Does God forget us? No. Does he get distracted? Is he like me? Does he have ADD? And he... No. He said, I have written you on the palms of my hands. The Lord watches the way of the righteous. As we come to the Lord's table today, come with a grateful heart. You're not forgotten. 